We're talking with Sasha Costanza Chalk, Assistant Professor of Civic Media at MIT about DML 2013. And, and Sasha, I know that you uh, work with and are particularly interested in youth practices around civic engagement. Uh, there's a, a lot of the imagery around youth as being apathetic and self-involved and, and not very political, politically active. Do you see them that way or, or do you see them as agents of social change in some cases? What, what, what is your picture of, of, of youth? Well, hi Howard and hello DML 2013 folks. Yeah, so not only are young people uh, civic actors, but young people often have the desire and the capacity to transform the world in really amazing ways. And in fact, young people have often been key actors in social movements uh, throughout history. In fact, if you look at any particular social movement and look at who was involved, uh, everything from you know, the early days of the civil rights movement when before uh, you know Rosa Parks moved, there was a 15-year-old uh, young woman who who uh, who uh, didn't give up her seat uh, on the bus uh, to the LGBTQ uh, movement, where there were young people who organized and mobilized and yes, rioted at Stonewall, uh, on through the immigrant rights movement of today, where we have dream activists who are undocumented youth uh, who are at the forefront of innovating new uh, appropriations of social media spaces. Uh, to win regularization of status, young people are, are often key actors in social movements and they're often appropriating the existing media platforms and technologies of the day uh, for social movement ends. So, in that, in that sense, do you think that youth are innovators in the use of social media in civic engagement in the way that they have been innovators in social movements in the, in the physical world? Well, personally, my own uh, framework of analysis, uh, which is transmedia activism, doesn't necessarily separate out what happens in the face-to-face -face or, quote, real-world spaces of social movement organizing uh, and what happens in the social media spaces. So social media is, is an important and crucial space for social movement activity today, but I think we should read it together across the broad spectrum of media-making practices that, that uh, social movement actors, including young people, engage in. So. There's importance in everything from you know, beautiful poster art and feature-length documentary films and radio productions, flyers and zines that are handed out on the streets, and all of those things also get reworked and remixed today and spread via social media uh, channels. So I think that the life, the, the, the media practices of social movements uh, extends across all the platforms that people do have access to. And I think it's a mistake to just sort of focus on one platform at a time if what we're interested in is how social movements actually use media to build identity, create narrative, amplify their voices, and uh, shape consciousness that leads to winning uh, political and economic and identity victories. Well, a lot of the, the social movements that we're seeing adopting social media are, are transnational. Is that, is that affecting youth uh, as well? Yeah, absolutely. Young people are um, increasingly transnational. We have, uh, we're in a great age of migratory flows so that we see a lot of interesting activity happening uh, among immigrant youth who are adopting mediated practices and social movement practices from their home countries and bringing them to their new uh, you know, places that they live. We also see uh, increasing sort of uh, mediated presence in multiple locations. So through real-time video communication, through uh, the immediacy of different forms of social media, people are retaining contact with folks, uh, you know, at a distance uh, more than they've been able to in the past, and that also again extends to social movement activity. And we shouldn't discount uh, the so-called old media either. Um, one interesting aspect, for example, of the Arab Spring. I mean, yes, people have talked a lot about the role, the role that social media, you know, played. Young, young, connected people. Uh, using Facebook and, and Twitter to, uh, to be informed of information about what was happening in the revolutionary context there. But in fact, you've also got this really crucial role of satellite television, which is available to more households uh, than it has ever been before. And so part of what's going on is young people and people of all generations really are seeing social movement activity and social movement practices um, remedi remediated 
uh, both through the spaces of the web and social media, but also through um, broadcast or satellite television, for example. Uh, to what degree and in, in what ways are youth participating in social movements outside existing channels? Well, youth movements frequently operate outside the existing channels of political participation, and that's one of the reasons, I think, why uh, often young people are dismissed as apolitical or apathetic. Uh, they may be organizing in spaces that don't look like politics to uh, academics or to uh, political consultants, but in fact have the capacity both to build youth leadership and then also when the moment is right for that energy to be transformed to what uh, is more recognizable as uh, you know, traditional political activity. Um, so young people organize and mobilize through ad hoc networks. Um, of course, youth participate in formal organizations as well, but a lot of what happens in the most powerful youth movements is that people create ad hoc networks which can form more quickly because of the affordances of social media. Uh, they meet face-to-face -face in smaller collectives that are then networked uh, through the web. And the other thing that's interesting about youth movements is that often young people engage in prefigurative politics, which means that they, yes, are idealistic and try and create and replicate through their social movement forms uh, the type of world they'd like to see. So that means that the processes that are adopted, say, in the Occupy General Assembly are processes that um, are directly democratic, are consensus-based, um, try and uh, not abandon the possibilities of, uh, of directly de democratic and participatory processes and replace them um, with sort of, you know, with representative forms. And we would have a longer conversation about that, but it's an interesting component of youth movements that they often do focus on prefigurative politics and ad hoc network forms. What are you looking forward to at the DML 2013? Well, I'm really excited for us to, you know, as always, gather and have incredible, interesting conversations about uh, what's happening in the digital media and learning space. But this year, I'm especially excited uh, to have a conversation about youth movements, hopefully with a bunch of uh, youth organizers who uh, will be in the space. Uh, maybe more so this year than in past years, folks who are actually doing organizing work uh, through youth movements who can speak for themselves about uh, the way that they're incorporating digital media literacies into their work. Terrific. I'm looking forward to that, too. Thanks a lot, Sasha. Thanks, Howard.